Yes. Now, we are going to revise accounting for share capital. Okay. Before going for accounting for share capital, first thing we have to understand is meaning of share capital. There is nothing but capital of the company limited by shares is known as share capital. That share capital is divided into small indivisible units because you can't divide the shares. Shares will be in the whole numbers. One share, two share, three share like that. It's not 1.5, 1.6 and all. So, the share capital is divided into indivisible number of units. Those units are known as shares. Okay. Shares can be equity share or preference share. Equity share means owners who have a voting right. Preference share means they have a preference over the equity shareholders, not over everyone, just over equity shareholders. That too at the time of receiving dividend and at the time of winding up receiving a repayment. Got it? The main difference is they will not be having a voting. Correct? However, if their business is there, then they will be having the voting right. Done. So, for the purpose of Schedule 3, disclosure purpose, the share capital could be divided into authorized share capital, which means how much is mentioned in the memorandum of association, capital clause. Correct? Yes. That is the maximum amount you can issue. The maximum number of shares that so much you can issue. However, you can change it by passing the special yes, special resolution. It is also known as nominal capital, also known as registered, registered capital. Later, issued share capital, that is part of your authorized share capital, which is issued by the company to the general public for the purpose of subscription. Out of the issued, how much is subscribed by the public? That thing is known as subscribed share capital. Out of the subscribed company, there is no hard and fast rule that company should ask for all the money. They might ask for part of that money. So that part of that money, what they ask or full money, what they ask? What they ask for payment from the subscribers? That capital is known as called up capital. And, and out of the called up, how much is paid by the shareholders is known as a paid up capital. Okay. Shares can be issued for cash consideration or other than cash consideration. Whenever the shares are issued, it can be issued at par, premium or discount. Par means where the face value is equal to issue price. Premium means face value is lesser than issue price or issue price is greater than face value. Discount means face value is greater than issue price. However, no company can issue shares at a discount. Only exception or only case where they can issue the shares at discount is sweat equity shares or ESOP, employee stock option plans. Clear? Sorry? Reissue won't come under this. This is about issue. Okay? Yes. So, so, how to account for the share capital? That is, when the shares are issued at par, that is face value will be equal to issue price. Here, in the share capital accounting, always you have to remember one thing, share capital will always and always be credited with the face value, irrespective of issue price, whether it is a discount or whether it is a premium or a par, always remember share capital will be credited with the face value. Okay? Done. So, when it is received in the lump sum, that time entry, the money what we are going to receive is through bank. So, bank account debit to share capital account. It could be equity or it could be preference. Right? Share capital will be credited because it is a capital increase in the capital whenever we issue. So, it is going to be credited. Increase in the capital credit, increase in asset debit. Bank account debit to share capital account. If at all you issued at a premium, bank account debited with whatever you received. For example, face value could be 100, issue price could be 118, right? So, bank account will get debited with 118. Share capital will get credited with 100. Sir, remaining 18, where it will go, sir? It will go to securities premium. What do you mean by securities premium, sir? That is kind of reserve. But it is not a free reserve. 
which means you cannot use it for providing like giving a dividend and all the usage is restricted so usage is restricted to how many uh, things five right that is one to issue the bonus two to write off the preliminary expense three to write off the expenses relating to issue of any securities like discount on issue underwriters commission etc four to provide on the redemption of securities either it could be shares or either it could be debentures whatever it is to buy back its own securities however the companies whichever is following section 133 that is the section relating to accounting standards the company whichever is following section 133 they cannot they cannot use it for two purpose writing off a preliminary expense as well as to provide for the premium on redemption which means as per section 133 all the companies should follow accounting standard so moral of the story is practically speaking no company can no company can use it for writing off a preliminary expense or to provide for a redemption of securities correct premium on redemption of securities done so if the shares are issued at a discount if the shares are issued at a discount the entry will be bank account debit discount on issue account debit to share capital account because i told you already share capital should be credited with the face value here 100 rupees share we are issuing at 80 which means bank account debit 100 two share cap sorry bank account debit 80 two share capital 100 discount 20 got it yes so what are the different process involved in the issue of shares first company will issue the prospectus asking the public to subscribe for it then those people will apply for it then if the single shot me money is taken there only it ends but if it is not taken in single shots they are going to take application money first then they are going to make the allotment get allotment money then whenever the money is required they are going to make the calls it can be one call two call three call how much how much ever they want okay done now if at all they are going to take it in the installments like application money allotment money call money like that then the entry will be passed like this how sir when the application money is received bank account debit to share application account later when the allotment is made try to understand not when the application money is received when the allotment is made that time you have to debit the share application account to share capital account yes you have to transfer it to share capital later you are going to make the allotment you already made allotment you are going to make call for the allotment money see application money first the shareholders i mean the applicants will pay later company will allot after that stage first company will make a call later those people will pay correct so whenever the allotment is made entry will be share allotment account debit to share capital account later whenever you receive the money entry will be bank account debit to share allotment account when the call is made share call account debit to share capital account bank account debit to share call account always remember one thing whatever might be the process installment or lump sum entry will remain same net entry will remain same you can see over here application credit application debit allotment debit allotment credit call debit call credit so that will get cancelled so net net we will be left with bank account to share capital in case of issue rate par okay. if the issue rate premium if the question tells premium money is received at which stage that stage you have to credit a securities premium when the call is made not when the payment is done when the call is made if at all if at all question is silent about it then always and always assume security premium money is involved in the allotment money done so whenever the application money is received bank account debit to share application later share application to share capital whenever the allotment is made share allotment account debit to share capital to securities premium later bank account debit to share allotment account share 
see share allotment if the money is due to uh, securities premium is in the share allotment then share allotment account debit to share capital share allotment money involves two factors face value as well as premium portion so premium portion shall be transferred to securities premium account done later you are going to receive that money bank to share allotment we are going to make a call share call to share capital share bank to share call account so subscription can be received in this way par how much ever you issued so much is subscribed very rare case practical situation right over subscription means you issued some shares but you got subscription for more than that right that is application issued is greater than the issued number of shares under subscription means people issued is more than the application received okay how to deal with this if the subscription received at par please whoever applied for it allot for them right whoever applied for it allot for them if the over subscription it is of course you can't issue more than issued numbers correct you can't issue more than issued number of shares so so you have two option one reject few application keep few application or else go for a pro rata basis third option is also available that is exercising everything together examination point the third method is very important icsi question number that sixth illustration sixth in the icsi question number the additional question which we solved jhp question is there no that one that so so when they reject the application what they should do sir when they reject the application straight away they should refund the money so whenever the share application money is received bank account to share application now when you are refunding share application to bank if at all you do a pro rata allotment that is proportionate basis for example 75000 shares applied 50000 is allotted some person who applied for 750 shares they will be getting a 500 cross multiplication in that case the excess money of 250 shares is there no that can be refunded or that can be adjusted to the next stage if the question is silent as to if the question is silent as to whether it is refunded or adjusted to the allotment or next stages it is assumed to be adjusted to the next stages done next if at all you refund what will be the entry share application account debit to bank account if you adjust to the next stages share application debit to next stage account basically in our example it was share allotment account done if at all it is under subscription you should check whether minimum subscription received or no if it is not received you cannot issue the shares you have to refund to them if at all it is received then you should allot only to the extent of received number of applications so company can allot whichever is least right one issued numbers or applied numbers whichever is lower that much company can issue the shares in the first question there was nothing special uh, additional question also there was nothing special in the second jupiter question again nothing special uh, this a limited question uh, around uh, 43000 is issued 40000 is applied for under subscription that question again nothing special uh, here also that will leave yes then then if at all if at all amount is not received in any stage if the amount is not received in any stage for example let's say call stage amount is not received first you will debit no share call account debit to share capital later later the money will come correct bank to share call but some people might not pay certain stage call it could be allotment it could be call sir is the application is possible not possible because they pay for it they apply for it then only they will become a shareholders correct so application money due is not possible but allotment and call money due is possible in that situation either you can choose two things one to keep the balance in that particular account only for example whenever the call is made let's say share call account debit 1 lakh 
to share capital account one lakh. But we received only ninety thousand. So then what entry we will pass? Bank account debit to share call account ninety thousand. Now share call account will have a debit balance of ten thousand. We can choose to keep it there itself, or we can transfer it to a special account called calls in arrears account. But be careful in examination if they tell calls in arrears or calls in advance account is open, then only you should open. In all other places it is assumed as not open. In the respective calls only we are going to keep the balance. Correct. If at all calls in arrears is open in the given example, what would be the entry, sir? Bank account debit. Ninety thousand. The ten thousand we are going to transfer to a special account called calls in arrears account to share call account. Call account. How much? One lakh. So that share call account any balance won't be there. The balance will be transferred to calls in arrears account. Got it? Yes. And if at all this is when the call is made, those people didn't pay. Some people will be like before calling only they will pay no. Those people that money we are going to transfer to a special account called calls in advance account. So whenever we receive extra money, the entry will be calls in advance account debit to bank. Whenever we receive the arrears money, entry will be arrears account debit to bank. Whenever we receive the money towards advance, entry will be calls in advance to bank. Sorry, bank to calls in advance because it's our liability. Correct. Later, when the money become due, that time that particular due account to uh, sorry calls in advance to the due, correct? Bank to due instead of bank to due calls in advance will be debited. Got it? Yes. And uh, one more thing to remember: how to present it in the balance sheet? Calls in arrears. We are going to do it like this: called up capital minus calls in arrears. We will get a paid up capital. You are not going to show it in asset side. Although it has a debit balance, you are not going to show it in the asset side. You are going to do it like this. That is, called up capital minus calls in arrears. You will get a paid up capital. If at all it's a calls in advance, it's your liability. You are going to show it in the other current liability. Other current liability. Done? Yes. And if at all calls in advance is there, you should pay the interest at the rate of twelve percent. Per annum, twelve percent per annum. From which date to which date, sir? From the date of receipt of receipt of money till that money becomes due, till that call becomes due, till then, right? If it's a calls in arrears, then you are given the option to receive, not compulsory, not compulsory. If the company want, they can tell not to give also. Okay, so that is your. Given an option to receive the interest at 10% per annum, from which date to which date? From the last date for the payment till the date of payment. Last date of payment till the date of payment. In this interest calculation, you should keep in mind those kind of uh, things. Where at the allotment stage, they will pay the first call money as well as second call money. In that situations, first call money to that portion we have to, for example. Let's say allotment. After allotment, after three months, first call is happening. After first call, after three months, second call is happening. So, to the extent of first call money advance, you should give a interest for three months. To the extent of second call money, you should give a interest for six month. Three plus three. Got it? Oh. So. some some special question will be there even in that they will ask prepare the cash book for the cash transaction and for non cash you are going to prepare it in a journal at that situation what you should do bank to application that will come in the bank account, uh, bank account cash account only refund of application money that also will come there only however transfer of the application money to share capital that won't come here that will be given in a journal because cash movement is not there Later, when the allotment money due, it is due. That time, it will be written in a journal. But allotment money received will come in the cash book. Call money due will not come in the cash book. It will come in the journal. Call money received will come in the cash book. Clear? That kind of question you should be concentrating. End up. This 
JHP limited question of the ICI, the additional question bank question, very careful where it is the question of treatment of the over subscription, right. In the given question, I will just uh, glance it out. In the given question, we received a 355,000 applications where we issued only 1 lakh shares. So, how the company treated for it? How the company treated for it? First 5,000 applications will get complete allotment. Remaining 30,000 will get two, 1 is to 2. 1 share for every 2 share applied. So, they will get around 15,000. Remaining 320,000, they will get 1 is to 4. So, 320,000 applicants will get around 80,000 shares. Overall, 1 lakh. So, the first kind of shareholder who are 5,000. They will, whatever they pay towards application money will adjust it to the application money. The next kind, the 30,000, they pay around 60,000 rupees as application money. They applied for 30,000 shares into 2, 60,000 rupees. That will be splitted towards application, adjusted towards allotment. Adjusted towards allotment will come around 30,000 rupees. Allotment money due will become around 15,000 into 5. So, around 75,000. So, 30,000 will be adjusted towards that. Remaining 45,000 will be received in cash. Correct? Third category, that is 320,000, they are allotted with 80,000 shares. But they pay application money of around 6,40,000. In that, towards application, we are going to adjust around 1,60,000. So, excess money would be around 4,80,000. In that 4,80,000, allotment due will become 80,000 into 5, 4 lakh. So, excess of 80,000 will be refunded to them. Accordingly, we have passed the journal entries. You can see the workings. These workings are very important. Done. Later, we discussed about ICSI question that is illustration number 6, Arjun and Co. Limited. Correct? Arjun and Co. Limited. Here, the best part is people. We are issuing 2 lakh shares, but we are getting an application for 3 lakh 17,000. And in the previous question, the JHP question, there they have given how many shares we have applied for. Allotment was not there. In the given question, they have given allotment, applied is not there. Got it? In the given question, allotment is given, applied is not given. So, we should do reverse working to calculate the application. Sir, why we want to do the application? To know how much is adjusted to the allotment. So, out of 317,000, around 31,000 or something has been rejected. So, remaining may around uh, 38,000 got allotment in full. So, they applied for 38,000 only. Around 1,60,000 allotment people who got, they allotted, they got allotment in the ratio of 2 is to 3. 2 share for 3 applied. So, they applied for 240,000 shares. The next category, who got allotment of 2000, they applied for 4 shares, they got 1 share. So, they applied for 8000 shares while getting 2000 as a allotment. Remaining things just like a JHP question. Then, we discussed about a share for feature, correct? So, share for feature means what people? Cancellation of the shares, cancellation of the shares for the purpose of non-payment of any money. It could be allotment money, it could be call money, whatever could be the money. Clear? Huh? Okay. So, sir, is the rejection of application and forfeiture are same? The answer is no. Rejection of application of the applicants. Forfeiture is of allottees, members. Right? After allotting the shares. Okay. Great. So, whatever you have received so far, sir, whether you are going to repay to them, the answer is no. You are going to transfer it to the share for feature account. You are going to transfer it to the share for feature account. Okay. So, so whenever the for feature happens, you are telling that there will be no more members. Of course, there will be no more members. Sir, if there are no more members, their capital can we keep it in the share capital? The answer is no. You can't keep. So, you are telling that we should re reverse the share capital, sir. The answer is yes. You should reverse the share capital. Okay, fine. 
So share capital, how much to be reversed? How much is credited? So much you should debit. How much we will credit? Called up or paid up? We credit called up, not paid up. Keep that thing in mind. So to the extent of called up portion, you should debit the share capital. So accounting point of view, we are going to divide this into two parts. Share issued at par, share issued at premium. If the shares issued at par, shares issued at par, share capital will be debited up to the extent of called up portion. So called up portion will include two parts, paid up, unpaid. Paid money, unpaid money. Sir, unpaid money always will be there, always will be there. Otherwise what happens? Forfeiture only won't happen, no? Forfeiture happened because there is unpaid money. So unpaid money will be there. Sir, paid also will be there, sir, paid also will be there. Why? Because they become a shareholder, because they paid application money. So at least in the paid up, application money will be there. At least. Okay, done. So share capital to the extent of called up. I told you whatever they paid that will be transferred to the special account called share forfeiture account. So we are going to credit the share forfeiture account to the extent of paid up portion, face value. To respective calls account, if the respective calls account is having a debit balance, earlier I told no, you can keep it in that account itself or you can transfer it to calls in arrears. If at all you transferred it to calls in arrears, then you are going to credit a calls in arrears account. Clear? Okay. Sir, if the shares are issued at a premium, then you should check two things. Whether premium is received, premium is not received. If at all premium money is received, keep one thing in mind. Don't touch the securities premium, let it be there where it is. Because when you issue at a premium, along with the share capital, you will credit the securities premium, no? Please don't touch the securities premium when it is paid already. Let it be as it is. Which means you should just account it the same way you account it for a par. Share capital account will be debited to the extent of called up face value. Securities premium don't touch. Two, share for feature. Share for feature be very careful as the securities premium is not touched. That money also should not be touched. So let it be there. Here share for feature you are going to take on the paid up face value not paid up issue price paid up face value and anyhow the unpaid portion will be respective call account or calls in arrears account got it okay so if the money is not received then you can't keep the securities premium credit balance because securities premium will get credit when when calling or when paying okay. calling it gets credited when calling so you can't keep the reserve which is not actually reserve because it is not backed by money. It will be a misleading to the shareholders. So you should reverse it off. Correct? So, so what you are going to do? You are going to debit it off. Correct? So share capital account debit to the extent of called up portion. Securities premium to the extent of paid up. There might be a question. There are questions we have discussed already. Where one person paid a securities premium, the other person didn't pay the securities premium. In that case, only to the extent of the person who didn't pay the securities premium, that will be debited. So always remember, securities premium will be debited only to the extent of unpaid portion. To share for future account, again face value, face value. To respective calls account, including securities premium unpaid, including securities premium unpaid. Okay. Done. Sir, in pro rata allotment, in pro rata allotment, you told application money will be adjusted to the allotment. Ah. Now, allotment might include face value and securities premium. Now, if we assume the application money is adjusted towards securities premium, then the answer will go for the second condition. If at all we assume the face value, adjusted to the face value first, then the answer will go for the third condition. Now, what to consider sir in that situation? Always remember, whatever the application money adjusted to the allotment should be first adjusted to the face value. If still excess remains, then you should transfer it to the securities premium. Clear? Ah? Okay, done. So, sir, those shares which we forfeited, those shares which we forfeited, what to do with that? You can reissue it. You can 
reissue it. So reissue could be done at par premium discount. Par premium discount. When you issue at a par, what would be the entry? Back account debit to share capital account. When you issue at a premium, what would be the entry? Bank account debit to share capital to securities premium. Discount you can issue, but one thing you should keep in mind. Max to max discount you can allow is how much is there relating to that particular share in the share forfeiture? How much is there in the particular relating to particular share in the share forfeiture? Clear now? Okay. So then what would be the entry, sir? Bank account debit. Share for future account debit to share capital account. Done. And one golden principle you have to remember is if at all you are going to reissue only to the extent of reissued shares, only to the extent of reissued shares, amount remaining in the share for future should be transferred to the capital reserve, not reserve capital. Capital reserve. How to remember? CR. 7, Christian Ronaldo 7, correct? Okay. Clear? Okay. Now, sir, what do you mean by that? Very simple. Let's say 2000 is forfeited, 1500 is reissued. In this situation, only to the extent of 1500 shares for future amount after adjusting discount, if any, should be transferred to capital reserve. Okay, so if the discount is there, we are going to reduce from the share for future and remaining we are going to transfer to CR. If the for uh, issued at a premium, sir, reissued at a premium, should you add the for future account? Should you add it to the for future later? You should transfer to CR. The answer is no. SP don't touch securities premium. How much is there? Let it be there. Whatever is there in the share for future, everything will go to the CR. That's it. And regarding this, we have solved few questions, right? In that, uh, you should be careful about. This uh, Shami question, which we solved, because out of that, a lot extra money of uh, 800 was there. Application 1800 was face value of the allotment, and around uh, 1200 was securities premium. So 800 we adjusted towards the 1800. Correct. So that thing, uh, this Mr. Long and Short, not much uh, difference. This uh, beautiful co. Here there are two kind of shareholders, Ram and Sham. Ram who is holding 1000 share, 500 shares, Sham who is holding 1000 shares. Ram didn't pay the allotment money and call money. Sham didn't pay the call money. So Ram's case is third case. That is security premium is not paid or not received by the company. Sham's case is second case where premium is received. So accordingly we should pass the entry and they are telling out of 1500 redeemed, 1250 is reissued and also they are telling out of 1250 Ram's everything has been reissued so Ram whatever there in the capital reserve account everything will be transferred to sorry whatever is there in the share for future account everything shall be transferred to the capital reserve Shams out of 1000 we are going to divide it into two parts 750 and 250 250 it will be there in the for future account only but 750 related it will go to capital reserve and uh, we saw we saw this question a b c question additional question bank where a pays only application money b pays only allotment money application and allotment money c pays application allotment first call all of them don't pay the second call same like ram and sham only done okay then uh, what if the what if the shares are issued for the non cash consideration sir in that situation, in that situation, whatever you purchase, basically asset, asset account debit to the vendor account. Vendor account you have to debit and share capital you have to credit. If at all you are issuing the shares at a premium to vendor, then vendor account debit to share capital to securities premium. Done. And uh, this Harbati that is LMR, last minute revision question, very important. There, the Kanti Bai, he won't pay uh, allotment money as well as call money. Whereas, Sheetal, she or he don't pay 
వాట్ కాల్ మనీ కరెక్ట్ సో జస్ట్ లైక్ రామ్ అండ్ శ్యామ్ ఉంది బట్ ఇయర్ బి కేర్ఫుల్ బికాస్ ఎక్సెస్ అప్లికేషన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ దట్ మనీ ఫస్ట్ షుడ్ బి అడ్జస్టెడ్ టు అలాట్మెంట్ సో వి సాల్వ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ అ డిఫరెంట్ వే కరెక్ట్ వి సాల్వ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ అ డిఫరెంట్ వే దట్ ఈస్ హౌ మచ్ వి రిసీవ్డ్ ఇన్ ద అలాట్మెంట్ how much was receivable minus how much was already adjusted minus how much is unpaid by the kanti bai so we got bank account to share allotment while forfeiting also we solved it in a different way that is share capital we took normal uh, secrets premium relating to kanti bai share forfeiture what we did was kanti bai paid 750 applications money where he got allotted with 600 right so we took everything sheetal what we did she paid a allotment so we can't take straight away 20 25 etc because application money excess hers also was there no she allotted with 200 but she applied for 300 so what we did we just took how much she paid for the application for the allotted number of shares applied number of shares we get for future amount then the balancing view will be this so this is all we discussed now anything else no with that our chapter got over got it yes